Well, the game at Waverley about to get underway. Umpires in charge, Chris Mitchell and Mark Westgarth. And uh, we've got Collingwood going left to right in the first quarter. The breeze across the ground towards the outer side. Monkhorst number one. A bit sandy there in the middle. He goes to ground and the umpire comes in and will ball it up. Actually, they put sand. It looks as if they put sand all over the ground, Drew. And the winds, quite a lot of sand. Well, they've had some trouble with this ground. Remember the Foster's Cup and they had to transfer games away from Waverley. Well, it hasn't been the rain that's been a problem. Riccardi for Geelong. Dodges a tackle in the centre circle. Finds Couch. Right footer by Couch. Clears the centre square. And an excellent mark taken by Saunders in defence for the Pies. We might have a goal-kicking shootout here today. We've got Rocker at the right-hand end and Ablett at the left. Rocker kicked 10 last week and Ablett needs 7 for 100. Pert up from fullback, running off Gary Ablett and finds Stasevich at centre-half forward. On the turn, he goes to Rocker. One out, a chance! Dragged off it by O'Reilly. Kelly barges his way through. Buried! The umpire will ball it up. It wasn't Kelly, it was Russell. And it's a ball up about 35 metres from goal. So Geelong looking pretty keen. Their form over the past few weeks has uh, left a lot to be desired. So a big test for them up against the Magpies who have started to show a little bit of form after having a quiet period a few weeks ago. Kick back by Barnes. Chance here for Poole. Now Collingwood through McGuan. Monkhorst catch the tackler. No, it was Gary Hocking. He's pretty keen on his chances today. Gary Hocking, he's been in the middle of the action two or three times already. And he receives the free kick just behind centre wing. Always a very, very good player at the football, Gary Hocking. He's kicking towards the centre of the ground. No mark taken. Bairstow. Birthday boy, Mark Bairstow. Kicks towards full forward. No mark taken. Ball there to be gathered. It's Krasiska. Well tackled by Brown. Too high. Well, Geelong fans wouldn't have been too happy with that. Collingwood get out of trouble. Krasiska from centre half back. He goes wide. Gavin Krasiska. Playing at half back. I've got him in the first goal kicker. I'm not confident. McGuan up towards half forward. And the mark taken by Kelly in between wing and half forward. He goes back with the hand pass to McGuan. Hit some form last week, Mick McGuan with four goals. This time his kick smothered. It comes back to him again. He's building on his stats all the time. Across half forward to the centre of the ground. Pool fumbles. Gets the hand pass away. Bairstow balks. And Geelong to break towards the outer side. Space for Paul Couch, who takes the mark. Couch looking to give the hand pass away. He does in the finish, and it's taken by Colbert. Colbert, who played a couple of games earlier in the year and has been in the reserves for the last few weeks, as has been Hickmott. Here's Francis, the dasher. Races through half-back on centre wing member's side. Good kick. Finds Mitchell. Mitchell with a little bit of space now. Can hand pass, he does, for McGuan. Fifth possession already for Mickey McGuan. He goes with a big torpedo punt. And there's no one back there for Collingwood. And Barnes marks safely on the goal line. Handball away. O'Reilly inside the 50-meter area. Kicks out towards a vacant wing area where Colbert has a chance to gather the football. In comes Graham Wright. But the ball goes over for a throw-in. Lee Colbert, an 18-year-old, playing his third game. Nephew of Dale Waitman. Barnes and Stasevich. Riccardi hands to the ball. Now Bairstow for Geelong. Hickmott, spoiled by Krasiska. Ball out of play. Mind you, I have seen Gavin Krasiska come up the ground from half-back flank and kick long goals. Go, Gavin. <laughs> I'm on you. I'm on you. <laughs> Living in hope, Drew. <laughs> well, they're going with the breeze, the Maggies. The breeze is blowing pretty strongly down into that left forward pocket. With the right hand into the ground. Mitchell's high kick, punched away by McGrath, gathered by Williams. Handball for Russell. Russell, who usually is quite constructive when he gets the footy. Williams spins out of trouble. Caught by Stephen Hocking. Ball rebounds for McGrath. McGrath's awkward kick taken by Couch. Away for Colbert. Colbert books, gets past Monkhorst and does pretty well. But that breeze is very difficult for the players to contend with. Hickmott did it well. Couch is a chance from here. Couch, good kick, kicks the first goal of the game. Well, that build-up by Geelong was first class. And Paul Couch, a great finisher. McGuan and Couch there having a bit of a dust-up. Geelong get the first goal. Well, maybe there's a little bit of feeling out there. There's a multitude of mistakes by both uh, teams, players on both sides. This is where the actual action started as far as that goal for Couch was concerned. 
Look how he got around Monkhurst. That's Colbert. Not a good kick off the boot, but it counts a run onto this. Brown has always impressed me. We're should I say at, hit Monk? We're back in the middle. Monkhurst goes over the ball. Right. Grabbed in by Rowe. Rowe tries to backhand this one. Clears the pack. Couch looks on fire. Five possessions already. Whistle's gone, and uh, it'll be a Collingwood free kick. Gary Hocking handing the ball over to Barry Mitchell. Kick by Mitchell. Up to full forward. Rocker with O'Reilly. Mick McGuan open goal. A stroll for a goal. Well, McGuan has kicked his first, Collingwood's first, but on the other hand, it was Couch, McGuan's opponent. He kicked Geelong's first, so maybe a little bit of tightening up or there's a lot of running being done by those two respective players one actually has done a lot of running I saw him on this near wing then he was out on the outer wing earlier great fitness by McGuan. so one goal apiece early in the first quarter Montcourt who has dominated the ruck in most games this year kick off the ground by Krasiska goes wide Kelly center wing got a few meters to spare away for Graham Wright right off that left foot awkward kick floating with the breeze punched away from Brad Rowe by Andrew Views and we'll have a boundary throw in talking about birthdays that's another young man who celebrated a birthday during the week on the 19th of July Andrew Views turned 29 years of age outside 50 metres boundary throw in Barnes doing the ruck work Mitchell for Collingwood a high kick he's had three or four already oh here's another goal Rowe quickly onto his boot Brad Rowe kicks the second goal for Collingwood they lead by six points I'd like to see this man further up the ground, playing in a difficult position in the forward pocket. It was an exceptional rover for Collingwood pre-season, but then unfortunately injury struck. And he was a class little man down there. Got a lot of ability, Brad Rowe. Two goals to one, Collingwood in front. Barnes and Monkhorst. Barnes wins it. It comes back to him. Off the left boot. Penetration with the kick. Ablett in the middle of the pack. All Collingwood, though. And Perth takes the mark. Gary Perth's pace might be worried by Gary Ablett today, but he was well in front on that occasion. It's coming back to Perth. Gary Ablett needing seven goals to bring up the century. It would be the first of his career in the VFL AFL. Woods playing his first game for the year. From centre half back up towards the wing, Kelly at the back, off hands to McGrath around the corner, and the little pass, and he's been all right. Colbert been prominent early, but a disgraceful disposal this time, and that is clearly out of bounds. He just took that a little bit too easily there, and uh, he's given the football back to the Magpies, and it's Saunders. Good kick by Saunders, past the wing, and an excellent mark taken by Kelly. Quickly hand pass, Francis. Geelong will have to match up because Francis is a terrific player. Linking up, here's a chance for Rowe again. The kick was smothered off the boot. Oh, and it hit the post anyway. And I felt that uh, Andrew Hughes did get a hand to it. Anyway, it's a behind a Collingwood kick by that player on screen, Brad Rowe. And the Magpies lead by seven points. Goal kickers are Brad Rowe and Michael McGuan. And for Geelong, Paul Couch. This is O'Reilly. Kicking to the far side of the ground, well outside 50 metres. Up goes Barnes, but he well doesn't done. try to mark. He gets it to the back, looking for Riccardi. Helping out is Bairstow. Bairstow kicks it along the wing. A good mark taken by Handley in front of young McCartney. Now Handley kicks it up near the 50 metre line. Marking contest, no contest. It was a good one. And it's Woods in front of a pack of three or four players. Well done by Barnes earlier to get it on. He couldn't mark it, but he hit it on in the direction of goal. Woods playing his 21st game of his career, but first this year. Barnes doing all right so far early on. Monkhorst has been an excellent ruckman this year. 
Bairstow tries to thump it long into the breeze. Ablett wrestling. Flicks off hands. Grabbed by Krasiska. Tries to shrug the tackle. Goes defensively. And finds the boundary line for a throw in. Players on both sides really not slipping it into top gear yet. Just waiting for somebody to set the light to this game. Well, the battle in the middle is fascinating between McGuan and Couch. They've had plenty of it each. Francis. Kicked by Francis to centre wing. Stasevich on the bounce just behind the wing. His opponent is Hinkley. A centering kick. Scott punches from behind Russell. It goes to Couch. No disposal for that one. McGuan's there. Toes it forward. Kelly. Off to McGuan, who was out of bounds. There's some really good hard stuff in that. Uh, obviously, when you see Craig Kelly on the football ground, you have a bit of a look around because he's usually right in the thick of things. Yeah. So Tim McGrath, his opponent, he won't take a backward step. Ruck contest. Mitchell tackle on Scott. And Don S Scott, Robert Scott for Geelong, looks as though he may have a job tagging Barry Mitchell. Would that be a fair assessment? Could be. We'll just wait and see how it pans. Yes, it looks like yes, he has a problem. Stasevich doing the ruck work. Well read there by Riccardi. Handball out into the path of Scott. Ball bounces nicely for him. In for Hocking, but Saunders stands his ground. And Stephen Hocking, in his endeavours, gave away a free kick. Saunders kicking towards the centre of the ground, taken by Graham Wright. He, in turn, goes across this wide expanse of Waverley Park. Opportunity there for Williams, away for Pert. Pert into centre half forward. Starsevich couldn't hold it. In goes Russell. Scott Russell swoops on it, bangs away, and misses from about 48 metres. Tell you what's going to happen today. Gary Abbott is going to have to run more kilometres than yeah, Steve Monaghetti. I was thinking exactly the same thing, Drew, because that's the third time that Pert has come down the ground. And Gary Abbott will have to tighten up by that. It's only a matter of time before Pert really does, or Collingwood really does capitalise on Pert's efforts. Oh, no ball by O'Reilly, well over the line. So, not surprising, he cleared the 50. Stasevich takes a mark. Off to McGuan. McGuan thumps it back to the goal square. I like Rocker's chances. Punched down by O'Reilly. Comes to Poole. Rocker, good tackle. Back to O'Reilly. Trouble for you. But he beats Rowe. Goes for a bounce. The ex-West Australian. Delays the kick. All Collingwood, though. Straight to Stasevich. Same as his last kick. Craig Stasevich. Thumps it in long. Rocker. And Rowe as well, jumping. They gave away the free kick, either one of them. And it's a Geelong ball to be taken by O'Reilly. Both full forwards struggling at this stage. Rocker down the right-hand end and Gary Ablett up the main scoreboard end. Geelong linking up. Hughes for Scott. Tries to shrug the tackle. Can't. Away for Hinkley. He's nearly run down, but he gets his kick away. Francis, the Collingwood tackler. And a good mark taken by Chris Sisko at half-back. Kicks it into the centre, McGuan on his own again. He catch on to be a little bit more careful there. McGuan coming up for about eighth position. It was exactly that. Monkhorst, a tumbling punt kick taken by Barnes. So the player's having a little bit of trouble kicking the football. That breeze is very awkward. It's blowing across the ground and down towards the right-hand end, the end of which uh, Magpies are kicking. His couch. Yeah, very good vision. Steel. Over the top, Bairstow. He can run, he can even take a bounce. No, he kicks it straight towards goal. And a good mark. Excellent mark taken by Handley as Ablett and Pert jostled just off play. Ablett, Ablett was trying to set up for the big fly from behind. There he is in front of behind, then tries to get in front, holding Pert down, but it was Handley cutting across in front, playing at centre half forward. Stephen Handley. And I think if he's going to get anything out of his football ability, he's got to play on the forward line. And a good kick is a goal. So Handley kicks his first goal. Geelong get their second. Collingwood lead by two points. Also can be swung into the ruck. A very mobile ruckman is Handley. She started his career with the Bears. He went to Western Australia. Then Geelong picked him up in a draft. Really has shown great maturity in his game at Geelong. 
sensational last year at the start of last year. Back in the middle, two points to the margin. Moncourse doing better in the set of bounces. Couch sharing the ball with McGuan, not really closely tagging each other, just winning kicks each. It's eight to seven possessions. McGuan in front of Couch. Bairstow over the top. Steel on the run, approaching 50. Long kick. Ablett. The punt through by Watson for a rush behind. Free kick is going to Perth. Another player doing well for Geelong is Bairstow. He's had six kicks and one handball. What would you rather see, the closely tagging game or the give a couple of runners their, their free reign? Free flowing. Well, that's, what we've, that's what we've got today in the yeah, middle. Yep. So Pert, good kick, well outside 50 metres, punched away by McCartney. Or Geelong, mix it up there, McCarty eventually. Nice kick in towards the half forward area, no mark taken. Krasiska de defending grandly. He kicks it back towards the wing. Here's a chance for Richardson. By oh, golly, he's got 40 metres in the clear. Kick towards half forward, and a great mark. Well done. That really was terrific agility by Craig Stasevich. He's over six foot three, and he's picked it up close to the ground. Rowe can't take it. Hughes is well tackled. He's still got the footy. Umpire gave him the benefit of the doubt. Handball, Hinkley. Just fumbling and couch. No risk there, out of bounds. Brad Rowe applying a terrific tackle there, and he's one centimetre away from having kicked two goals. He's kicked one goal and a poster. Barnes, good leap over the top of Moncourt. Couch, another possession once he slipped the tackle. The kick is perfect. And here is Lee Colbert, unmarked at centre wing. Hickmott offers the lead. He doubles back on Francisco. Can't break the tackle. Handley. Centering kick. Ablett over his head. Bouncing ball for Woods. Watson charges at it. Well done by Shane Watson. Woods to Pert. Gary Pert is winning easily on Gary Ablett, who hasn't seen it yet. Bouncing ball near centre wing. Stasevich and Hinkley. Some sort of a hand pass. Back to right. Slum up his hand pass. Stasevich doing all right. Mitchell starting to find the tempo now. Whoa, oh, trouble for you, son. Was a good tackle. It was a terrific tackle. And the the free kick has, it has to go to Geelong, surely. The player's a little confused, but uh, it's certainly going back to young Colbert. Drew has already mentioned, just 18 years of age. Here's Gary Hocking. Coming up for possession number three kick in towards half forward and Montcors gets back couldn't quite control it pulling with defense under a little bit of pressure Richardson percentage football and he takes it over for throwing very good value for Collingwood Alan Richardson 28 years of age and has played just 73 games but uh, he's been a just a real good goer for the Magpies Handley doing the ruck work has uh, given away a free kick there and Montcors will take it at right half back flank what a season he's had, Don. Damien Moncourt. Yeah, a little quiet last week. Uh, Wind and Moncourt negated one another. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes against Barnes. Already Barnes has got a better leap. So picking up quite a few possessions. So Moncourt will have his day cut out once again. It's interesting. Right. Monkey, two kicks. Barnes has had five possessions, but Collingwood are winning the hit out six to three. Yes, I think he's got a uh, fairly healthy height advantage, Damien Moncourt. Barnes leaping. Moncourt standing his ground ball close to the boundary line and it's taken over by Trevor Poole and there's a bit of a mystery man Drew Trevor Poole won a best and fairest with uh, Richmond 85 played state football mm. and really played well for Geelong initially but has been out of it this year he's best oh, well. run down by Francis could have nearly given away a free kick but by G you were pretty stiff there Tony exactly right Terrific to see a little fellow with great pace using it in a defensive manner. It's a good run down by Francis. And I'll tell you what, there's something for young boys to uh, to watch there. Tony Francis acknowledging the umpire, the decision, just nodding, standing the mark was good. <laughs> oh, Did think McCartney, so? Yes, lip. no oh. drama. He Kick off the ground by Watson. Go on, what did he do? Well, he thought oh. it was 1500 bucks if he chatted him, so he just bit his lip. 
Here's McGuan at right half back. Kick in towards half forward. McGrath looking to be paid the mark. No, he plays on and clears the pack. Well done, Tim McGrath. He's kicked towards centre half forward. At the back, Brown! Great leap. And he's marked it on his chest 50 metres from goal. Might be too big an assignment. He goes for the short pass. It's effective. Ablett's got it. Gary Ablett, a good lead. He's kicked 93 goals for the season. And that's the first time he's got away with uh, got away from Pert. And I think Gary Ablett will have to do more of that because Pert is one of the strongest and best body players in the AFL. And that is also Ablett's strength. Using his body against his opponent. But Pert is already excelling in that area. Well, what a good mark it was by Paul Brown. But here's Gary Ablett. Kicks for goal. Kicks it long and accurately. So very well done there by the Cats. They get their third goal and they lead the Magpies by four points. Just could see 100 goals kicked here today if Gary Ablett gets his act together. It's his 94th for the season. Great conversion rate. Two goals to every one point. Well, he only needs an average day, doesn't he? He's averaging 7.8. He needs seven today. Bounce favours Monkhorst. Can't clear the area, though. Couch is there. Hand pass to Bairstow. Terrific combination. Bairstow on the run. Ablett one out with Perth. Oh, but helped by Francisco. The Queenslander cut across the front of the pack. Good mark. He's kicked towards the outer side. Helped by the breeze. It scurries along. Riccardi floats one to Barnes. Kicked by Barnes, short of the 50. Handley, spoil comes to the front. Hickmott, he did well, and the umpire's going to ball that up. Fraser about to come on for Collingwood, warming up, limbering up on the boundary line. Good spirit by the Cats there, giving Hickmott uh, plenty of congratulations for his effort there. Geelong by four points. We've got six minutes left in this first quarter. Chris Siska, Gather, hand pass, Mitchell, in turn. Saunders couldn't quite control the footy. Very close to the boundary line, and we'll have a throw in. The play would be uh, around about 65, 70 metres from the Geelong goal. They lead three goals straight to Collingwood, 2-2. Handley, beaten for it by Monkhorst. Does pretty well. Kicks it back near the wing. McGrath and Kelly. But Riccardi does well to get back and give McGrath some uh, assistance. And with pace, runs away. Left foot kick in towards half forward. The mark is taken by Hickmott. Handball hocking. In turn, Colbert from 50 metres. Lee Colbert into the square. Oh, Woods probably could have taken that. Gary Pert and Watson. And it goes over now for a throw in in the right forward pocket for Geelong, about 25 metres around from their goal. In round two, Gary Ablett popped a suspension for an incident with Perth, so it'll be interesting that little match-up today. Yes, I don't think there's uh, much uh, love lost when the contest is there to be won. McGrath and Kelly off the ground, McGrath being held by the jumper. Advantage ruled, no. Umpire Chris Mitchell in the picture there, indicating that the ball has to go back. And Tim McGrath will take the free kick on centre wing. This is his fourth kick. Good contest with Craig Kelly. Up high, Barnes. What a talented big player he is. Hit by Barnes. Ablett on the lead. Top mark in front of Pert. Pert has given him the runaround in the first 20 minutes, but Ablett's come back with a couple of marks and now kicking for his second goal. Again, you notice on the lead, Ablett not using his body. It's the only way he's going to get away from Pert. Barry Mitchell coming off. Fraser coming on for Collingwood as Ablett lines up for his second. Familiar roll for Mitchell, the bench. Ablett, 40 metres out. Kicks it hard, through the wind, second goal. You'd also have to say that Pert is doing an excellent job on Ablett. In fact, I would say that I'd go as far as to say that Pert is beating up. Although this man, Ablett, has kicked two goals. That's an eight-goal game, if he keeps going. Well, we'll just wait and see. Actually, 
You restrict Gazza to eight, you've had a winning day, haven't you, this season? Well, he's played three times and kicked double-figure goals and they've lost. Yeah. So Gary Ablett, he's kicked two. His couch, he's been very, very effective around that centre. His kick in towards the half-forward area. Out comes Woods. Steele is there for Geelong. The ball tapped close to the boundary line. Steele, little one through his legs, but it's taken by Saunders. Saunders' kick for Collingwood to the half-forward area. Hinkley and Starcevich. Hinkley the first to recover. Starcevich isn't that far away from him, but Hinkley shrugs the tackle and kicks Geelong temporarily out of trouble down towards Bairstow and Scott Russell. And the ball goes over for a boundary throw-in. It's interesting what they're doing with Colbert, Geelong. He's starting half forward when the ball's bounced. Now he's a loose man, or is he being changed? I think he's been changed, actually, the half-back picking up Starsvik, but he has been picking up a lot of kicks around midfield and been a good player for Geelong. Montpourche, ridden into the ground there by Gary Hockey. Umpire deciding on a bounce. Both players looking anxiously towards the umpire when they heard the whistle. Damien Mockhorst, I mentioned about the height advantage. He's 203 centimetres. John Barnes is 193. But Barnes certainly has been effective around the ground. So has that guy, Bairstow. Ten possessions. Little kick. Falls in short. You get the impression that Collingwood are kicking with the, uh, with the aid of the breeze. Graham Wright will give us a bit of an idea here. No, he won't. He just chips it away. McGuan drops the mark, but he's able to recover. Handball away, Russell. He nearly kicked this, Scott Russell. No, he won't. Kicked his second behind to the quarter. Geelong leading by nine points with just over two minutes left in the quarter. Fascinating in the middle. Couch 11 possessions, McGuan 10. And this terrific contest. Both being proving very effective for their respective sides. Now Riley this time decides to come to the members' side. The ball dropping in short. Hinkley contests the marking duel and then gets his kick away back to the wing Chris Siska handball into the path of Fraser usually pretty quick couldn't break clear chance for Richardson his little kick is very good he's a natural right foot kick but he got he that one away with the left. oh too slow and Stasevich is marked about 45 metres from goal here's the build up as soon as Stasevich had taken that mark he turned his back but Williams was by himself well, he shouldn't have any trouble with the distance, and that's probably why he did take his time and he's kicked the goal. So, important one for Collingwood. They've kicked their third, but they still trail Geelong, who've kicked four into what we think is a maybe a two or three goal breeze, and Geelong lead by three points. Mark Fraser the start of the game on interchange. He was just involved there in that passage of play. He placed Barry Mitchell. Colbert, he started half forward, he's got the job on Starsky. Back in the centre. Steve Lowe is in front here. Geelong on the scoreboard, they're kicking into the breeze. They've had four scoring shots, Collingwood six. Here's a free kick, Geelong free kick to Scott. In between wing and half forward. A minute ten left in the quarter. Another goal for Geelong, very important. Boy, do they need this win. They need to rush home with a string of wins at the end of the season. Here's Woods. Long kick to centre wing. Two against two here. McGrath. The better recovery. Off the side of the boot. And the breeze didn't help that one. Out of bounds. It's a good player down too. It's a long player down on centre wing. Trainer is now out to him. We just can't pick him up. I just can't pick him up. Tony Woods takes the free. To half forward. Oh. No, nope, no mark. Steve Hocking. Well, that's not a free kick. The ball was being held in, and Craig Stasevich understands that decision. It's Hinkley that was down on the ground. He's now on his feet, still being attended to by the trainer. Well, they can afford to lose Ken Hinkley. There he is. Not looking too well at the moment. The ball back out of bounds with Riccardi. That'll be the last bit of play in the first quarter. Three seconds left. And it's been a good quarter by Geelong who need this. Ken Hinkley looking a bit dazed here at quarter time. 
but Geelong have the lead. Four goals straight to Collingwood, 3-3. Three, three. Second quarter about to start in the big clash here at Waverley between Geelong and Collingwood. Geelong leading by three points. Awkward bounce. Probably favoured Montforce, but gathered by Bairstow. Can't break clear. And the umpire will have to do it all over again. Gary Hocking. Doesn't mind uh, aggravating a situation, Gary. This time the umpire just throws it straight in the air. Francis misses it. Poole was in the action. And Poole will receive the free kick. He doesn't kick the ball. He handballs away for Gary Hocking. His kick off the left foot. Oh, oh excellent oh. effort by Hickmock. Oh, yeah. Do you like that, Donny? Terrific, Terrific stuff by Hickmock. Oh. Uh, looking to give the uh, pass away, but uh, now deciding that maybe a long shot at goal. Gee, it was a top oh. effort. Right. Hickmock from 50 metres. And gets a good distance with the kick, but just floating away with the breeze and through four, one behind. So Geelong's score advances to four goals, one. Collingwood, three, three. And Gary Pert manning up on Gary Ablett. Ablett kicked two goals in the first term. So Pert, concentration, has to be right on the job today. Straight up the centre to Monkhorst. He can't take the mark. Off hands to Besto. Besto back over his shoulder. Ablett charging. Had to wait for it. Didn't quite carry. Stumped out of there by Saunders for the safety of the back pocket. Out of play. Well, you'd think that Geelong might have a big chance for a rush of goals in this quarter. The breeze across the ground, but also at Geelong's back. And they had the lead at quarter time. So I reckon they have the advantage in this game, even though Collingwood had six shots to four in the first quarter. Handley almost clean possession. Pert, little one out of there. McGuan dishes out the hand pass, fumbled by Pert. Back he goes to Saunders, over the top to Francis, and they work it out of defence. Tony Francis off the left. Kelly palms it down to McGuan. His kick to centre wing. Rowe waits. Great trap by Williams. Paul Williams oh. lost, smothered by Stephen Hocking. Williams again. Magnificent football. Up to the 50. Francisco, uh, rather, Stasevich with a new opponent in Colbert. And the ball out of play at half four. It certainly was terrific football by Paul Williams. Ball about uh, 65 metres around from the Collingwood goal. Brad Rowe in trouble. Riccardi gets clear. Hand pass for Buse. Buse having a look. No one to kick to, so he's got to bomb away. Blindly in towards the centre of the ground. Handley can't control it. A little tap for Couch's benefit. Paul Couch underneath. And he receives the free kick, which uh, probably was a little dicey, but uh, certainly he was the man in after the footy. And Couch has it for Geelong. Just a few metres forward of the centre line. He'll kick it well within scoring distance for Geelong. Marking contest. And it was a good effort at the back. It's taken by Gary Perth. Perth, short kick. And well delivered oh. by Francis. Put his foot up to keep Scott away. Is that fair? I, uh, suppose, it is. It is. I suppose you say he's protecting himself. And now 50 metres. We just have a look at the replay. And uh, Tony Francis making sure that Scott wasn't going to get anywhere near the football. And Gary Hocking giving away 50 metres. Francis kicks quickly. Perth has run right down the ground. Marks forward of set a wing. Ablett's giving it up. He's 100 metres away. Kick by Pert. The full back kicking to full forward. Palm down to the front. Through goes Bairstow. 11 possessions in the first quarter to the skipper. He goes back to Barnes. Barnes across the face of goal. Trouble. Oh, kick. It was a good kick. It eventually. was risky, but uh, geez, a talented player. O'Reilly, short pass. Steve Hocking. Look to bring it straight up the centre. Handley in front. The spoil came from behind. 
Fraser gets the hand pass away. Francis to Russell. Russell, 65 metres out. On his own is Kelly, but it's too high for him. Over Kelly's head and rushed through by O'Reilly for a behind. The Collingwood 3 4, trail Geelong 4 1. Actually, just watching Monkhurst then as um, uh, Pert ran down the ground, teaming very well. He went back, picked up Ablett, which allowed Pert to run down and create on centre wing just minutes earlier. There's a big fellow. Well, he does pretty well. Kicks it in towards full forward. O'Reilly is there. Handball's in front of himself. Brad Rowe with pace. And good effort there by O'Reilly. He knew he was in a bit of trouble and with desperation forces the ball over for a boundary throw-in. It's in the left forward pocket for Collingwood, about 35, 40 metres around from their goal. Rocker. He's had a uh, little bit of trouble getting his hands on the football so far in the game. Underneath that is Colbert. Graham Wright appealing for the free kick, not forthcoming. Just the effort there by O'Reilly. You can see something in Geelong's game today. They're a lot sharper. They've had meetings behind closed doors. They've lost three out of their last four, so their season's on the line here. Yes, I noticed uh, that they're languishing in 10th place on the ladder and uh, probably something like about three games from the 6th place side. But there's their captain leading from the front. Mark Bairstow, 12 kicks and two hand passes. Kicks the ball clear. Boundary throw in. Quite near centre wing. It's basically the same team that represented them last year in the grand final out there today. So the emphasis on their attitude. Gary Hocking trying to force it clear. Tackles Francis, didn't have the football, Tony Francis. And the free kick will go to the Collingwood Rover. Gary, get back or you'll get another 50 metres given against you. And he's got a kick over the mark and the umpire hadn't blown time on. Well, certainly a uh, blatant free kick. Francis for Monkhorst. Monkhorst a little slow. His kick chopped off at half back by Stephen Hocking. Little kick into the centre. Oh, Handley didn't go for that quite as hard as he should have. His couch, he can make up for it. Couch is kicking towards full forward. Adlett and Pert. Ball goes to the back. Watson kicks it away towards centre wing. And it finds touch. And Handley's hurt himself. He's in the centre square and he does not look too good at all. Has not moved. There he is. And he is in a lot of trouble. Has not moved. And here it is. They're copying it. McCartney, you see there him, his face. Here's Scott for Geelong. Discipline kick to the front of the goals. No mark taken, nearly Brown. Now Woods. Quick kick goes back to the 50 metre line. McGuan. Oh, they're appealing for it. They might get it. No. Umpire gives the players the benefit to move it clear, and eventually it's Collingwood. Graham Wright, left half back. Little kick. In for Stasevich, punched away by Colbert. Discipline play by the youngster. Takes Stasevich to the ground, and the free kick will go to the Collingwood half forward. And Hanley's coming off too to allow Tudor to come on for Geelong, and actually Colbert doing quite a good job on uh, Stasevich. Stasevich mm, didn't see Riccardi coming. Bairstow is really fired up today. Flips the ball up to Hinkley. Hurt, missed it. Woods. Brings up the sand. Monkhorst didn't know what to do with that one. Hoists it high into the breeze. Gary Hocking climbs and takes the mark on his chest. Ablett going back towards the goal square. Hocking short. The mark taken by Steele. Still Ablett a chance. Steele goes long and high. One out Ablett with Pert. Free kick Ablett. <laughs> Who's holding who in those situations? Well, What's this? Look, Ablett's holding as much as what Pert is. Then it's Pert. Really mark it anyway. Well, do you think that you'd penalise Gary Ablett in that situation? Oh, listen, I... The forward's trying to get the ball. The, the defender yeah, doesn't care. But also, the, what these forwards do, and Ablett's very good at it, he holds from in front. Ablett lining up for his third goal. He needs seven today to bring up 100. He's never kicked a century. That's three. He could be looking forward to a big weekend. I don't believe he's got to go to Perth tomorrow to watch maybe Tony Moderate kick 100 after Gary Ablett may achieve that today. Well, Ablett needs seven today. Yeah, Moderate needs six done. tomorrow. I might get the double. <laughs> well, this is a great contest. I don't disagree with Scotty. I reckon Perth's doing a great job on Ablett, but Ablett's kicked three. 
Fair enough, Gary Ablett. Three out of five so far. Geelong lead 31 to 22. Monkhorst doing well in the ruck contest, but Barnes doing well around the ground. Here's Poole. Kick across his body. Good mark for Siska. You can see the 50 metre line there in the background. Handball away for Gary Pert, who's run all the way down the ground from marking Gary Ablett. And his kick has been marked by McGrath who's doing equally as good a job across half-back for Geelong. And Tudor's just about to come back off the ground and Hanley back on, so something's not working as far as Geelong is concerned. Oh, oh. good mark by Brown. Well, obviously, Hanley goes off for the doctor to have a good look at maybe what they thought could have been a serious injury, and they've decided that there isn't any seriousness about it. Scott, Hickmott, all around the net. Oh, grabbing the ball. Well, there you go. Two decisions in a split second. One could have gone the Cats way, but now it goes for the Magpies, and Krasiska kicks it across the ground. It's Saunders. His kick to centre wing, not good enough. Hughes tries to take it in front of his face. Oh, Fraser! He must take a free kick there. Yeah. Fraser for Collingwood. Hughes should have grabbed that one. Kick by Fraser. 31 to 22, a nine-point lead to Geelong in the second term. Stasevich's hand pass. Alan Richardson and McGuire. Off the left, putting it wide. Too wide, out of bounds. Free kick to Steve Hocking. And in front of goals is Hinkley. We've got a knock just before quarter time. His cheek is bandaged for the second quarter. Gary Hocking. Oh, took the bump. Got it going Geelong's way. Brown to help. Now it comes to Hocking. Oh, he might be holding it. Play on, says the umpire. Colin would have it now. Alan Richardson, the short pass. Too high for Russell. Steve Hocking meets him head on. Some good contest going on around the ground. Holding the ball. Great kick to Geelong on the couch. Oh, uh, it's going. <laughs> it's gone back. I think it was Couch's first, though, wasn't it? Yep. I'm sure the umpire reversed that from Couch to Williams. He goes wide to Richardson. He steers it low into the breeze, too low for Kelly. Hickmott in front, Kelly all over him, and Hickmott will take a free kick. They've kicked a goal, but it won't count. Uh, McGrath it is. These redheads. It's Tim McGrath on the back line. McGrath in front, and you can see there. No. But I'd like to go back to the one where Couch and Williams were involved. The Collingwood fans down in front here were screaming because the kick was going to Couch. All of a sudden, they got it. Well, I was looking at what Hughes back. was trying to do to Rowe, actually. Not in that instance, but a little earlier when Couch was penalised. Well, I'll tell you what. Very quickly, the decisions can go the other way. One displeases the fan, and the next one pleases the fan. Rocker trying to force it forward. O'Reilly on Paul Williams. And the ball held in, so the umpire will bounce. Kelly coming off. Kelly's coming off. Interesting. And McEwen well, on for Collingwood. McGrath has done a very good job on Craig Kelly. Whether Ron can play at centre half forward, he's been. He is the leading goal kick. Actually, he's going the other way. McEwen down to full back. What's Perk going well, to do? Go down forward. That's an inglorious captaincy debut for Kelly. He uh, captained last week for the first time in his career was dragged. Dragged again this week, kickless. Kick by uh, the Geelong defender, lands with Scott. Barnes, get rid of it quick, he does. Oh, look at that handball. That is brilliant. Gary Hocking a little slow. Kick nearly taken by Handley. Still there, Geelong are a chance. Couch a sweeping hand pass. Riccardi, the speedster, goes with the left foot. Long, nearly marked on the goal line. Taken by Darren Steele. Handball back. McEwen, gone. You are gone. Gary's got you, Atlas. Chance for Poole. No, Hickbot gets it. Kicks it back to the front of the goals. Oh, strong with Saunders. Little kick. Chris Siska. Poole. Hickbot. That's too severe, Adrian. And the free kick will go to Collingwood to be taken by Gavin Chris Siska. Well, the pace of the game just lifting a little bit. Chris Siska's kick. Short. Graham Wright marks. Poole a little late on the scene. Poole playing as a loose man across half back for Collingwood. We're 14 minutes into the quarter, and we've had just only one goal, and that to Geelong. Just only, yeah, something like that. Gary Hocking, 
off the left boot. High to Hickmock, camped underneath it. Francisco spoils. Well done, Brown. Goes defensively to Gary Hocking. His kick up to the 50. Besto takes the mark. Boy, that was an ambitious pass by Hocking because Besto was surrounded by two Collingwood defenders and he still picked Besto. Look at this for a little nine iron. Look, two Collingwood players and Pert really didn't go. He could have gone, Gary Pert. He who hesitates is lost. Well, Besto is having a top game, kicking from 52 metres. Ablett. The punch came from McEwen. Goes to Woods. A short pass close to the boundary line. Russell takes the mark. With one skipper, Besto, going like a rocket. And the other skipper, acting skipper, Craig Kelly, has been benched. Tony Shaw, of course, is uh, injured and missing eight short of 300 games. Tony Shaw. Alan Richardson, the hand pass in. Grabbed by Watson. Good running by Russell. He's kicked to centre half forward. Stasevich, too far out to score. They want it quickly. They get the lead from Rocker. Oh, good score. Came from O'Reilly. Rocker kicked 10 last week. Hasn't seen it today. Ball out of play. And Lee Tudor's has come back on for Collingwood in the second quarter. Hickmont off. Perth still playing a loose man across Collingwood's half back, and McGrath's doing exactly the same across half back for Geelong. Boundary throw in. 60 metres from the Collingwood goal. Bearstone. Tim McGrath. Scott Russell. Umpire forced to ball it up right on the 50 metre line for the Magpies. McGrath doing the ruck work. Bashes it close to the boundary line. And it goes over for throw in. It's an interesting ploy watching uh, now. He's on centre wing, Gary Perth. First man across centre wing. Ten and a half minutes left in the second turn. Mock horse, but Barnes gets it down for Bearstow. In turn for Stephen Hocking. He kicks long. Out towards the wing. Good mark. Well done. Good play, Couch. Beat you fair and square, Mick. Couch coming up for his ninth kick. McGuan has done pretty well for the Collingwood side. Nine kicks and four hand passes. Pool a chance to run onto it. Fraser, the man there, Poole's little tap. No Geelong player there. Oh, Scott, gee whiz, that was troublesome. Steele gets the hand pass wide. Scott taps it to his own favour. And kicks a great goal. As Robert Scott goes in for his first, just behind play Handley. He's still having trouble with those ribs. He copped a bad one in the centre square, went off the ground for a while. And the ball came down just prior to this to centre half forward. Hanley went in, copped another one, and here's Scott going to get himself out of a bit of trouble. That did look troublesome. I agree with you, Robbo. Up he pops and kicks a goal. Wasn't that terrific stuff? You often see bad knee injuries result out of that clash with Robert Scott. The Cats have kicked the only two goals in the second quarter. That's a pretty tidy break and a low-scoring affair here at Waverley. One drag down. Umpire comes in and will ball it out. Progress score. Couch, 15 possessions. McGuan, 13. Well, what Geelong have done, they've put McGrath onto Starcevic and they've released Colbert, who was Starcevic's opponent. Now Colbert's picking up Pert, who's a loose man or was a loose man in Collingwood's defensive area. Cats leading by 15 points. Francis with speed, but going the wrong way. Here's Riccardi, who also has speed. Wright has speed. Oh, he's retarded, Riccardi. And takes the free kick. Uh, having the better of the duel there, Riccardi and Graham Wright. Look at Bairstow, he takes his fourth mark and come out for his 17th possession. Centering kick is good, steal. Now they can play centre corridor football, they just need a mark on the forward line. McEwen, the new opponent for Ablett. Short pass, couch. But I think he's still too far out to score. He'll need to kick this from 55. That was a, quite a precise kick there. It was a good kick, actually, yeah, because yeah. there was just nothing yeah, offering much, down further. Well, there wasn't much room for error. And look at the players up in that forward line. Couch, left footers can kick long. This is about five metres short. Scott kicked the last goal. Goes to ground this time. Gary Hocking gets some sort of a hand pass out. Tudor just on the ground. Gary Hocking again. Fierce hand pass to Brown. Barnes in the goal square. Barnes! A goal! Oh, do you like the catch now? Oh, 
Could you believe or would you believe it that Geelong are in front by the margin that they are after last week's pick at the Leopard against St Kilda? They certainly were stormed up. You could see that at the quarter time in the huddle, the players huddle. They're going on with it. This is the second quarter. There's Barnes' goal coming up now. Really puts the pressure on Montclair's. So back at the centre, the Ruckman. Barnes does well, but McGuan is there for Collingwood. He kicks it forward in the direction of Starsevich. And well done. Good effort. McGuan was there to try and make it difficult. But Starsevich holding his ground as Mark on the 50 metre line. Good long kick too to goal. Well done, Craig Starsevich. He's kicked his second goal, and it was a badly needed one for Collingwood. They were three goals three at quarter time, and it's taken them until the about the 18, 19 minute mark of the second term to kick their first goal of the quarter. Well, he's playing half forward, actually half forward flank when Kelly was on the ground, starts the but Kelly's been taken from the ground. He's now taken over the centre half forward position. And he's doing very well, Collingwood starts it. Eight minutes to go to half time. Montcourse palms it down to Williams. That's perfect. Kicked by Williams, bouncing the full forward. Rocker has not had a touch yet. Rowe fumbled that one. Left it behind for O'Reilly. And Rocker's hurt after that clash with McGrath. Very slow to his feet. Francis getting back at centre wing. The Rovers back. Scott wins this one. Run down by Wright. And it bounces off the knees of Colbert. Steele. To Scott. Oh, great combination. Couch had to get rid of it in a hurry. McCartney for Collingwood. Out towards centre wing, there's nobody there. Callum McAllister's the closest. He's on a little chair just behind the boundary line. And here it is. And Rocker had actually hurt his left thigh still limping down in the goal square after that clash with McGrath. Boundary throw in. Barnes contesting with Monkhorst. Graham Wright held. Probably didn't have the football. Then goes Francis. What a terrier he is, Tony Francis. Couldn't break clear with the football. And the umpire will bounce. Right on centre wing, adjacent to the players' interchange area. 7-1 plays 4-4, Geelong leading, Montcourst. In goes Hocking. Well, in goes Hocking. Combination between the brothers there. Colbert steadies and delivers it high. With good link, but a good mark taken back there by McCartney for Collingwood. Kick goes back towards half-back region, taken by Richardson. Handball, Saunders. Not household names, but certainly effective players for the Magpies. McGrath marks at centre-half back for Geelong. Looking to transfer play, goes to Hinkley. Hinkley in turn wider, still O'Reilly. Ball bounces kindly for him. Short kick. Along the wing. Gatherers by Brown. Skillfully does it. Oh. And gets away from Perth, who's come all the way down the ground. Brown's kick. Well done. Because that is Gary Perth's immediate opponent. No, no, McEwen, we've got to apologise to uh, Ablett because pardon. McEwen's got the job on Ablett now. And Perth still playing. Well, playing across half-back is Perth being picked up by Colbert. But it hasn't Brown got some talent. Well, Ablett has kicked three goals. A, a good break for Geelong if he could kick this. Distance, no problem. And the accuracy is it on. Four goals to Gary Ablett. 8 1 Geelong, 4 4 Collingwood. 3 off 100, eh? I'd like to bag him now, wouldn't you? We've still got a game and a half to go. Not a game and a half, two and a half quarters to go. Brown doing well on centre wing and Lablet on the lead, taking the mark. That's how he's kicked all his goals today, out in front, except for a free kick against Perth earlier in the second quarter, which was doubtful. Just under five minutes remaining to half time. Gary Ablett has four on his way to needing seven for 100 today. Steve Hocking. 
Geelong and helping out with that with their attitude all around the ground. Williams, dragged down by Hocking. Umpire says, give it to me, I'll ball it up. And Gary Hocking says something that might cost him money at the tribunal. No, if you don't swear and you tell the truth, you can't get pinged by the umpires, can you? He has a look <laughs> on his face like Peter Dean did last week and it cost him 1500 <laughs> I think he had some justifiable claims there, actually, G. Hocking. <laughs> That's Poole. High ball to the edge of the square. Punched down by Watson. Saunders delayed the hand pass. Caught by Scott. Ball Collingwood here. Williams with the toe. Francis has shown some today as well. Tony Francis bouncing into the wind. Floats the hand pass out to Monkhorst. He's got right in support. Hockey can't grab it. Has to go the kick. They've mucked it up, Collingwood. Russell, he's caught by Couch. Well, he was lucky he wasn't penalised then. Oh, gee whiz. And Couch, he says, that is holding the ball, sir. And well, what it was good to see in that was the fact that two Geelong players laid the tackle, which gives an indication of the way Geelong are going about this game. Barnes and Mockhorst over the top. Richardson, Williams for Collingwood. Kick across his body. Couldn't quite get enough hook on it. And it goes over for a throw in in the right forward pocket for the Magpies. Three and a half minutes left in the first half. And Geelong have done extremely well. 8-1 to 4-4. Four, four, and four goals to Gary Ablett to take him to 97 for the season. Rocker doing the ruck work. O'Reilly allows it to just bounce over in front of he and his opponent. And it goes out for another throw in. Barnes. Done pretty well, John Barnes. Six kicks and four hand passes. Twelve hit outs to 14 in Montcourt's favour. Starcevic, Hughes and Rowe. Goes over. For another throw in. So pretty close to half time. It's still deep in Collingwood's forward area. You could do with a goal here. Starcevic, Hughes, Bearstow, but chipping in as Hinkley. Already mentioned, had a heavy knock in the first turn. And a little slow, Rowe ran him down. Francis, Hughes the tackler. Francis, the kick towards full forward. Rocker nearly got it. O'Reilly does well. Stephen Hocking will clear for Geelong. He has a good look. Short kick in towards the centre. Good mark, Riccardi. Fraser, now his opponent by the look of it. Riccardi runs away. Kick in towards half forward. Mark taken by Poole. Poole plays on quickly. And a good mark taken by Brown because the Collingwood player must have made it awkward for him to judge the football coming in. Brown is about 40 metres out. Should kick the distance. Sets it up. The breeze does the rest. Distance is there. Not quite the accuracy required. And through for another behind to Geelong. So the Cats in... Uh, Awkward conditions as far as the breeze is concerned. Kicking quite accurately. 8-2. Collingwood 4-4. Geelong by 22 points. Kick in by Pert. Hocking takes the mark on his chest just outside the 50. And the breeze is right at his back from here. And he's not a million to one to kick this. And Pert's got his back to Hocking just looking at Ablett trying to block the lead if Ablett was going to. Robert Scott goes for the goal. Across the face. Out of bounds on the full, so they didn't do too well then. Geelong from there. I wonder whether McEwen's been shifted out and Pert's gone back onto Ablett, or whether Pert does the kicking out. McEwen runs down the ground. Oh, we've had Pert doing the kicking out every time. Interesting, McEwen's playing on Ablett. McEwen's the leading goal scorer in the reserves, and here he is at full back in the seniors on Gaza, who's approaching 100. Bearstow. Hold at 35. Williams takes it. Tudor gets it. Holding the ball. Actually, the switch has been made. But Tudor's gone back on the it now. Hurts a loose man. A poor kick by Tudor, but fortuitously, and McCartney dropped it. Picked up by Hanley. In towards full forward. Geelong have got the crumb gathered. Ablett must get a free kick. I think Ronnie McEwen was a bit stiff because Ablett was going to take possession. Ronnie anticipated. Grab hold. Tackle. Well, a very uh, 
difficult shot for goal. You can see the breeze blowing Gary Ablett's hair around. It's pretty strong. He's going to have to judge this perfectly. Oh, what a great kick. He's hot. 98. And the second's ticking down in the first half, so you'd have to be... Uh, Back him to kick 100 today. Yes, he's doing it well, isn't he? And he hasn't bloodied his copy book by kicking it behind. Five straight. Three of them coming in this the second quarter. Back in the middle, just 16 seconds remaining. Gary Hawking, walking the hand pass, goes with the kick to centre half forward. Mark's taken by McCartney. I don't think there's time left for Collingwood to get a score. Pert, there's a bit of a McCartney lookalike to McGuan. He goes to bounce, but time is out here at Waverley. And it was a quarter dominated by Geelong, and they have a very handy break. They lead nine goals, two to Collingwood, four, four. Drew, have we got to do it? Second half here at Waverley. Craig Kelly back on the ground. McEwen bench for Collingwood to start this third quarter. 28 point lead to Geelong, who are shocking Collingwood at the moment. Look at that tangle of arms and legs. And the emergency umpire running out to Colbert and Starcevic. Colbert, youngster, an 18 year old in his third game, having plenty to say in that contest. Here's Gary Hocking, wide to the half-forward flank. Bad bounce for Riccardi, and lets in Fraser. His hand pass to Saunders, off to Alan Richardson. The kick by Richardson to centre half-forward. Kelly backs into the pack. At the back is Hocking. Kelly, four handballs, no kicks as yet. Colbert goes backwards. McGrath, round the corner, short of centre wing to Poole, who used position well to get there in front of right. Trevor Poole from the left half-back area. Hand pass to Stephen Hockey. He's going to get run down. No, he slips the tackle for Graham Wright. He's kicked towards half forward. No mark taken. Ball spills to the uh, feet of Scott. And Francis, Tony Francis, takes it over. The boundary throw in left half forward for Geelong. Geelong leading 9 2 to 4 4. Ruckman, Hanley. Scott tries to tap it to the advantage of Tudor. Tudor off the ground. Oh, Mark should have been taken by Woods. At the back of Steele. In goes Ablett. Can this be sixth goal for the day? In short, Scott. That's Mark in front of Francisco. It was mentioned at half time that uh, Robert Scott was a little quiet in the first quarter, but certainly got into the game in the second term. He's got electrifying uh, pace, Robert Scott. No significant moves taken place on either side except for the fact that McEwen's gone from full back off Ablett. Kelly's come back onto the ground at centre half forward and Colbert's gone for Geelong's gone back onto Starcevic. Basically the team's lining up as they were in the first half. Well Scott kicking for his second goal. Well, he does it nicely. Well done. Good kick by Robert Scott. First goal of the second half for Geelong. They lead 10-2 to 4-4. Well, one gets a feeling about how far Geelong. The double Collingwood score. They finished the quarter, the second quarter, very, very well. And they've started exactly the way they let off. There's Robert Scott. That's his second. Well, 34-point lead to Geelong, and this is the quarter. Colling would have to do it. They have the breeze in this term, but Geelong have it again. Couch out of the middle. High ball to full forward. Pert with two fists. Francis there for Collingwood. Wright saying, go. Francis has time to fumble. Gives it off to Wright. Wright lopes. Kicks to half forward. Kelly in front. Punch from behind by McGrath. It goes to Colbert. Back he goes. Buse to McGrath. The kick to centre wing, Bairstow. Richardson gets it away from him. 
and Bairstow 18 possessions in the first half. Colbert impresses me as a player. He's got some real football now. He's playing either half forward or half back. Collingwood does do is he does it well. Collingwood with obviously with plenty of concerns. Riccardi just retarded ever so slightly by Mark Fraser. But certainly it was there. Riccardi, handball, Barnes. Handball again, Hinkley. Kick towards centre-half forward. Chopped off the mark taken by Paul Williams. Now, Williams is at uh, centre-half back. He transfers play to this near side, the member's side. Dropping what he should have taken was Russell. Hinkley goes for Colbert. Colbert's handball. Scott's got it. Nearly gets past Saunders. Little kick for Brown. Back is Williams. And he takes it over for a throw-in. Collingwood really struggling. Blustery conditions prevailing at Waverley Park. The breeze is blowing pretty well across the ground, but slightly favouring the right-hand end of the screen. Scott Russell. Oop. Tally, but chopped off by Hinkley. Taken now by Gary Hockey. Kicked by that player towards half-forward. No mark taken. Brown, no Scott. Back it goes to Tudor. Tudor's kick to the front of the goals. Anyone home? Yes, it's Steele. Can't quite keep his footing. Francis, handball. Steele, still a chance. In there is Woods. Tackle. Couch. Can he get his second goal? Oh, it floats away with the breeze. And through four, one behind. Very impressive Geelong today. The way they're following up. Not the first effort, but also the second effort. There's a lot of intensity about their game. Pity they can't do it week in, week out. 10-3, plays 4-4, Gary Pert. Nice long kick, well outside 50 metres, looking for Monkhorst and finds that player. Gives the handball away. Through comes Woods, awkward kicking style. Doesn't make it all that easy for the forwards. Chopped off by McGrath. He's giving Tally an awful bar. Short kick, Marcus taken by Poole. Williams just a fraction late on the scene. Poole runs away, poor Marty. Kicking towards the centre of the ground. The mark taken by Barnes. This is all Geelong. The early minutes of the third quarter when the pressure's on Collingwood. Geelong are just taking it right up to the pies. Tudor. His kick in towards full forward. Mark taken by Geelong. It's steel. But everything going Geelong's way too because that was a missed kick by Tudor. And it just so happened to find Steele. The two guys who played at North Melbourne together last year. Darren still playing in the forward pocket. Well, the distance could worry Steele. He's kicking into the breeze, but he gets terrific distance with that kick. It's a goal. What a brilliant kick for Geelong's 11th goal. They lead now by 41 points. Very serviceable player is Darren Steele. Can play in a lot of positions. Playing in the forward pocket today on Woods. He's playing deep in the forward pocket, actually, Steele. Well, that was a missed kick from Tudor, but then again, a lot of latitude given by Woods to steal. Forty-one points now is the lead to Geelong. Who would have thought this? Barnes gets his hand to it. Goes to Williams, though. McGuan back to Williams. Collingwood need a rush of goals. Kick by Williams to Watson. He'll take a free kick. He's coming back. Watson will have to kick from behind the mark. Well, I thought Collingwood were out of their slump. They lost four games in five in the middle of the season, but they got out of it. Let's face it, their wins were against Richmond, the Swans, and Footscray, which mightn't read all that well. Here's Rocker, and this is his first touch for the day. A clean sheet in the first half. The man who kicked ten goals last week. Watson, who kicked the ball down to Rocker, started on the back line. Being picked up now by Hocking, Stephen Hocking. As we mentioned, Rocker yet to score. Here we are, eight minutes into the third quarter. His first mark and kick is a goal. <laughs> He's done very well this year, the youngster. It's his second, uh, 62nd goal for the season. Ten goals last week, that's a terrific ball. Find 
us up from here. They'd need to be leading by three-quarter time, you'd reckon. Back in the middle, on course and Barnes. About 50-50. Gary Hawking makes it Geelong's ball. 17 possessions. Across the centre wing. Poole, hand pass to Scott. Boot quickly the ball. Man in front, Brown. Can't mark, Francisco grabs him. Play on, right. Hinkley spills a mark. He's not too well, I reckon, Ken Hinkley, after a knock just before quarter time. Works round onto the left. Interference here. And it's going to be a free kick to Geelong. It's coming back to Poole. Poole has just forward at centre wing made that interference look a little bit worse than it really was but there's a good mark taken by Perth in the right back pocket for Collingwood. Gary Perth had a bit of a spell in the uh, second quarter away from Gary Ablett. Ablett has kicked five goals. Short kick mark is taken by McGuan. McGuan is coming up for possession number 16. His immediate opponent Couch has had 19 touches. Oh Hinkley nearly pulled in a screamer. He's hurt himself. He's on the ground behind players. Collingwood take the ball away. Russell, he's going to share it. Williams, now Francis, and Francis gets a good goal for the Magpies. Uh, Hinkley's all right. He's up on his feet. Crashed to the ground rather heavily. There it is, and they do hurt when your legs are taken out from underneath you. You go down bottom first. O'Reilly for Geelong. Kicks it back in. In short, the mark is taken by Riccardi. Short pass. McGrath into Stephen Hocking. So revamp looking Geelong side today. Names are the same. The attitude is not. Saunders. Inboard he goes. Monkhorst. Kick by Monkhorst. Up to half forward. Steve Hocking should have marked. So right up behind plate from Hughes and Rowe. For the wrestling match, there they are. Top of screen. Free kick to Hocking here. The breeze mostly going across the ground from the broadcast side to the far side, but also at Collingwood's back in this third quarter. And yet Geelong continue to outscore them. McGuan clean ball by that. Scott skirts around, gets rid of the hand pass. Riccardi floats one into Couch. Couch a 15 metre hand pass wide for Scott, who double passed. Well shepherded Robert Scott. Round the boundary line he goes. The umpire's blowing the whistle. It's coming back. The shepherd not good, according to the umpire. Exactly. Well, it's bad luck for Geelong because the build-up was pretty good. Looked promising. Now the ball goes all the way back near the wing. And it's McCartney who will kick Collingwood into attack. Short kick. Saunders. He plays on. Looks downfield, kicks high. Marking contest, no one can take it. Good shepherd by Watson. Chance for McGuan. Little kick. Too far for Stasevich. He's got another chance. Attempted off the ground. Well done by Colbert. My word for a youngster to do what he did then. And O'Reilly acknowledging Colbert's effort. It was a terrific effort. There he is, number 35. Really strongly built player at this stage of his career, but uh, you have to consider just 18 years of age. Rock of the rut work, Rowe. Snapshot by Rowe is across the face. And three for one behind. And then one wonders which umpire made that decision. The goal umpire looks at the boundary umpire. The boundary umpire looks at the goal umpire. And we give it a and they consult. We have 10,000 Collingwood supporters who cheered it. He's done a top job on Rocker. He's had just one kick. McGrath. Hinkley. Taking a couple of knocks today. Goes for a run. Just beats the tackle. Kick not really to the advantage of the side. And a bounce at centre wing. At one stage, Geelong led by 41 points. Back to 33. Monkhorst. Here's Watson seen all that much of uh, Shane Watson today. Four possessions. Right. Kick by right. Rocker. O'Reilly again. First year player in the AFL. West Australian. Doing particularly well. McGrath with the football. 
goes long up towards the wing too high for Tudor Bearstow into the action attempted tackle on Saunders in there to help out Richardson for the Magpies his kick across his body is pretty good Kelly marks ironical cheers Kelly kicks in towards full forward well done again by O'Reilly bashes it clear kick from mid-air by Stasevic goes over for a throw in about 60 metres around from the Collingwood goal Collingwood arresting Tony Francis in the forward pocket being picked up by Buse moved uh, Buse's former opponent in Bradley Road a half forward being picked up by Hintley Stasevich gets the tap down can't do much with the footy Buse gets the crumbs and runs away from the pack handball over the top of the grass running beautifully is Scott Scott has had a marked influence on the game. He's kicked the centre center of the ground. Handley can't control it. He plays it along in front of himself. He's got two players to beat. It was very difficult. Williams chips in. Handball for Graham Wright. He gets past Hinkley. Wright nearly kicks the football. Then gives the handball for McGuan. McGuan's long kick. A great goal for the Maggies and badly needed. His second. The fact I think he kicked Collingwood's first and his opponent Paul Couch kicked Colling uh, Geelong's first and this is his second and it was a great kick by McGuan you can see there being pursued by Couch that's Collingwood's six so I wonder whether that's going to be a lifter for Collingwood back to 27 points after it had been 41. Scott out of the middle. About 12 minutes of wind-assisted time left for Collingwood. McCartney gets rid of the hand pass. Here's Saunders. Happy to see that ball out on the defensive 50. Kelly playing in the forward pocket. He's still being picked up by McGrath and starts to be at centre half forward. Colbert's his opponent. Francis has come up the ground, uses with him. And his kick is smothered by Francisco, all out of play. Little things like that on the back line and all around the ground. The players see that and will lift. And uh, are Collingwood close enough to lift, get back into this game? Clever play there. Saunders 31, came off the shins of hockey. Desperation being shown from both teams here. The umpire will ball it up. It would be a pretty fair decision. Hinkley's gone back onto Watson, and Stephen Hawking's gone out and picked up Bradley Rowe. The switch of those two Geelong defenders. Geelong did recast their side this week to the extent of bringing in Steele, Hickmott, and Poole. But uh, a lot of senior players have lifted, and their attitude is different, certainly, from last week when they thrashed by St Kilda here. McQuan starts it off, gets it. Russell at the hand pass, Fraser. Right. Got a bit of a run now, Collingwood. Kick by Wright's a beauty for Rocker. Just over his head though. Kelly palms it back. Oh, and Hinkley takes it away from Williams and the ball out of play. Well, a promising build up, but uh, maybe the kick by Graham Wright. Not quite what he was looking for. 50 metres from the Collingwood goal. Another goal here for the Magpies. Could them give them some impetus. Stasevich doing the ruck work at the back, Steve Hocking runs away, gets his kick just in the nick of time, out towards the wing, a good mark taken by Richardson, and he looks as though he's hit the drop now, tag in Mark Pesco, who was quite a damaging player for Toronto in the first half. Put a mountain going off between McGuan and Bearstow. Well, it's not really a captain's act, that is it? Good way of putting so easily. like this Geelong leading by 27 points Collingwood making some sort of a surge in the middle part of this third quarter Richardson's kick across the half forward line Mark taken quite easily by O'Reilly handball away from McGrath McGrath's kick out to a vacant wing area Riccardi and Fraser the bounce Riccardi got back the quicker of the two his kick across his body has been marked safely by Stasevich. He finds some run from Woods. Pass to Watson. And he takes the mark sandwich between two Geelong players. Gets the hand pass out to Williams. Williams the short pass to McGuan. It's a man-on-man -man contest. What a mark in front of Couch. And Kelly about to come off once again for Collingwood as 
McGuan took a terrific mark. It's a good battle between those two. McEwen coming on for Collingwood in replace or replacing Kelly and McEwen's going to the centre half forward or full forward position. We'll just wait and see. Gee, that was a top effort by Mickey McGuan. When he kicked that last goal, he really had plenty to say to rev them up. Francisco offering a lead. Had a shot, he'll kick the distance. Oh, Breeze will help him from here. This will make the distance. Colling would have kicked the last two goals. Another one would be very handy. Watson at the back. Oh, was he pushed out? Was Barnes pushed out? Mm. Oh, I was in a terrific position. Well, I just saw Barnes take a big leap. He didn't offer anything, Barnes. It gave the indication that maybe he was pushed out of position. Well, this could lift the pies. Watson kicks the goal. Well, Shane Watson came to Collingwood as a promising forward last year. It was a big ask for a youngster playing up in the forward line. Received a lot of attention. Did well early on this year as a back man. So you've got to question that one, don't you? So the margins come back from 41 points to 21. Pine would have kicked the last three goals. It's 69 to 48 on the seven sports scoreboard. Eight and a half minutes left in the third quarter. And Collingwood having some sort of a go at Geelong. Here's Riccardi for the Cats. Short kick, effective. Mark taken by Poole. Handball away. Riccardi's got his second possession in that passage of play. He's kicked the full forward. Adler can't take the mark. Hurt is there to make it difficult. In goes Handley. The ball forced over for a boundary throw in about 60 metres from the Geelong goal. Gary Ablett, five goals to his name from just six kicks. Mock horse doing the ruck work. Little kick off the ground or attempted by Francisco. Still got the football underneath. Brown appealing for the free kick that the umpire will bounce. The surface still not really stable here. At Wavy, just looking at some of those players when they pull up rather suddenly, they do dig the turf up. Chance here for Steele. Gets his foot to the ball, forces it forward, Woods overruns it. Scott! Snapshot for goal by Robert Scott. He's offline. Two goals, one for Scott. 11-4 plays, 7-6. Away goes Perth. Beautiful long kick. It's gone 70 metres. And for position, it was spot on because the one was at the back. Gathers the footy, runs away. After two bounces, kicks into the forward line. And Rocker is marked. About 45, maybe a little closer, 40 metres from goal. It's amazing what can happen from a kick with great penetration that Gary Pert put on that football. Rocker kicking for his second, and he does it nicely. Zach Rocker has kicked his second goal. It was very quiet in the first half. 8-6 Collingwood trail to long 11-4. Three kicks, a mammoth kick initially by Perth. There it is. One, two, and then a chip. So you perhaps say two and a half kicks and a goal. Well, Collingwood have kicked the last four goals and are charging back at Geelong. Here's Buse. Caught by Russell, just gets the hand pass away. Barnes an awkward half volley. Hughes once more. Going back to Bairstow. Very wide out the centre wing. Tudor. He was out, ball in. Crowd well, thought they might have seen something different. Tudor again took a bit of a biff around the face. Free kick. But don't do that. Dual ball. Well, Geelong needing a steadier. And now the certainty that was Gary Ablett's 100 goals today is not so much of a certainty. He's hardly seen it this quarter. Still needs two. Steele. Long ball. Ablett in this shot. 
comes to the front. On the 50, at centre half forward. Great pick up by Williams. His hand pass missed the target, but Woods there to back up. Right. Collingwood have certainly lifted. They've found an extra gear. Graham Wright going for the run, similar to McGuan's down the other side. The short pass to Watson. And Watson, who'd hardly seen it, has certainly had a good third quarter. Well, you mentioned that Collingwood have lifted. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. What a terrific mark taken by Hughes. Just wide of centre half back. He's going to kick it wider still. Looking out here for McGrath. Kept his eyes on the footy. McEwen is there to put some pressure on. But McGrath does well in the finish to force it over for a boundary throw in. And the crowd out there near that passage of play appreciative of the efforts of Tim McGrath. And certainly the Collingwood fans happy with Ronnie McEwen. A much improved player as Tim McGrath initially started with uh, North Melbourne. Starsevich got the football underneath. Hughes can't break clear. Handball high. Riccardi trying to give Gary Hocking a passage. In goes Fraser. There's Barnes. Now Riccardi. Slippery little hand pass, but Hughes, he got down by Rowe. He was away. He didn't know Rowe was there, though. Russell, handball. Can it bounce nicely? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's all right for Geelong, though. Scott's handball was good for Poole. Poole runs through the centre of the ground, looks further afield, up there for his teammate in Brown, and Brown marks on his chest. Probably two kicks from goal. He goes back, kicks it high. Ablett at the back. Has got it. No, missed it. Air shot. Still a chance. Bumped off the football by McCartney and Gary Ablett. In goes Perth by G. Wiz. That's a real go down there in the goal square for the Cats. The umpire is forced to bounce. Back. And Hinkley's gone off the ground. That was Watson's man. And Liam Pickering's coming on, picking up Watson for Geelong. Halfback flank is Pickering. Well, Gazza should have kicked that, shouldn't he? in the teeth of goals for Geelong. Here he is. Can't get boot the ball. Rushed through by Saunders. Cool. Just under four minutes to go to three-quarter time. Collingwood have kicked the last four goals and have certainly made a game of this. The margin, 17 points. It had been 28 points at half-time and got out to 41 points at one stage. Perth's last kick in. Who will ever forget it? Scott just outside half forward his hand pass missed couch Richardson bit of an unsung hero unlucky to miss the 1990 premiership Hocking Rowe Hocking goes to ground Rowe keeps his footing Ooh, punch down by Brown he'll take the free kick it was cool free kick to Rowe well done by Brad Rowe for kicking towards the uh, half forward area bounce was awkward Geelong control it Scott couch Barnes, a slippery hand pass for Hocking really wasn't necessary. Hocking has to go wider still for Scott. In goes Francis. It's a tough stuff in the clinches now. Montfort can't break away. And the umpire will call for a bounce. It's Tony Francis not happy with Scott. And Francis is going to get a free kick. Uh, I don't know whether there was anything in that but still. Francis has got the football for Collingwood. Different game of footy now. My word. Well, Collingwood all of a sudden realised that uh, they've got the job in front of themselves. Steele and Woods. The kick goes across the body. Taken by Pickering. Pickering's kick. Out towards the wing. A good mark taken by Saunders. Combines with Richardson. Tries to get through. Succeeds. Kick across his left shoulder. No one home for Collingwood. Mark nearly taken by Stephen Hopkins. Get rid of it quick. He does. Combination Riccardi and then Pickering. And Geelong out of trouble. The mark is taken on the wing by Scott. Nasty customer Francis. Now, is that 50? Should be. Scott Pucci. Oh, we're near the mark. Got away with that one. Steel. Up in the direction of Ablett. Here he comes. Not quite this time. Perth's there. Looks for the boundary. Handley tries to break a tackle. Out to Ablett. He busts that tackle. A centering kick. In the goal square is Hocking. Advances away from him to Monkhorst. Oh, fancy that. Away to Williams. Minute 30 to go for the quarter. Collingwood looking for another one. Fraser, centre wing. Scott's had a good 10 minutes. Kicked by Robert Scott to centre half forward. Mark dropped by Steele. Well, it's been in about the last 15 minutes that Collingwood have come right back and put some heat into this game. 
And they're playing with some passion now at Waverley. Uh, uh, I was going to say, Drew, if they'd have done this, if they'd have had this intensity right from the start, Geelong wouldn't have the advantage. It's catch-up footy now for Collingwood. They're still trailed by, what, 17 points. It's at centre-half forward for Geelong, Mark Fraser. And Peter Riccardi struggled for possession. The umpire will bounce. Hitmon about to come back on for Geelong. I think Tudor might be the replacement. Or the player going to be replaced. Handley doing the ruck work up against Bonkhorst. Handley succeeds. Punched away by Wright was ineffective. Scott, oh geez, had a terrific uh, two quarters. Here's Poole. Short kick. Ablett. Woods in trouble. Saunders in trouble. Richardson gives away ground. Woods might give away a behind. That was the only move he could make. And it adds to Geelong's score. That rush behind. Geelong go on to 11-6. Collingwood 8-6. So it's three goals exactly the margin for the Cats. And the Cats haven't scored a goal since the seven-minute mark of the quarter. Collingwood have come right back at them. Fraser. Just three seconds left. Not time for another score. Francis, centre of the ground. There goes the siren for three-quarter time. But they've made it interesting for the last half hour, Collingwood, with that spirited comeback that saw them reduce the deficit of 41 points back to 18 at the last change. So with uh, just over 25 minutes of football left, can Collingwood bridge the gap? They trail by 18 points at the start of the last turn. The bounce favours Monkhorst, but Richardson takes it away. He's kicking short. Poole taps it back. Stephen Hockey, little kick off the ground. Geelong force it forward, but only as far as Monkhorst. His handball for Mark Fraser. And a little left foot kick was effective. The mark is taken by Williams. Now Williams for Collingwood. They must get the first goal of the last turn if they're to have a chance. His kick goes across centre-half forward. Good mark for Kewan. Diving through the pack. He's marked within scoring distance. Well, he's been on and, on and off interchange, Ron McEwen. He went down in the second quarter onto Gary Ablett at full back. But he's a leading goal kicker in the reserve grade this year, McEwen. His shot for goal. Looks pretty good. Collingwood. get the first goal of the last turn and it's just 12 points the difference in favour of the Cats and that, that's just his second goal in the seniors this year that's right, right. isn't that interesting because he did kick a lot of guys I suppose with Rocker up there he plays forward in the reserves and back in the seniors and he's playing alongside uh, Rocker in the forward pocket Ronnie McEwen not a lot of ability Ron Out of 38,000 here at Waverley to watch this game between Geelong 
and Collingwood. Will Ablett get his 100 in this quarter? Who's going to win the game? Just two kicks the difference now. Ablett needs two more. Robert Scott has burned since a quiet first quarter. Over the head of Steele, mark taken by Woods. Returning to the seniors for the first time this afternoon. Woods towards the outer side, close to the boundary line. Out of bounds on the full. Now Hickmott with the free kick. Ablett in the goal square. Hickmott into the breeze from that side of the ground. But Ablett's a bit of a chance. Oh, got up very high. This is a good score from behind. It comes to Russell. Collingwood breaking again. Collingwood have kicked the last five goals of the game. Fraser tries to run away from Riccardi. He's kicked, looking for the advantage of Watson. Watson's little kick off the ground. Gathered by Mitchell. He's harassed out of it by Hughes. Watson's tapped to the advantage of Stasevic. Stasevic, a kick across his left shoulder. Into the square, McEwen. Knock it through there. Tim McGrath. And he does. Quite effectively. Rush behind for the Magpies. Just the 11 points now. The margin in favour of Geelong. The kick in has been marked by Hughes, but it's got to go back, does it? No. It's been allowed. Hughes has got the football. Close to centre-half back. Goes short. Stephen Hawking's made good position. He marks and plays on. Little left foot kick. And it was effective again. Poole marks on centre wing. I should say that Francis on interchange for Collingwood along with McCartney and Kelly playing at centre half back. There he is figuring in play. Started at centre half forward, went on and off interchange for Collingwood today. Yeah, Kelly, the acting skipper, has been benched a couple of times. And once again, Barry Mitchell, the million dollar man, has spent most of the day on the bench. In the forward pocket at the moment, Mitchell replacing uh, Francis. You'd have to say, if Geelong lost from here, it wouldn't be the first time they'd squandered a big lead to lose a game. They at one stage led by 41 points. Hickmott goes in hard for the ball. No whistle yet, Richardson. The umpire will throw it into the turf. Look at Bryce Saunders a little while ago, just tripping that ball out the centre wing. 21 and a half minutes left in the game. 11 points is the margin in favour of Geelong. Clean possession, Monkhorst. Kick smothered by Hocking. Couch. Francisca dives and marks low down. Well, these are the things Geelong were doing earlier. Playing in front now. Collingwood doing all the right things. Richardson's done a terrific job for Collingwood. He was put on to Bearstow at half time. Bearstow had 14 and 4 up to that stage. He's had 15 and 4. So one kick for the Geelong captain in the third term and in the early part of the last quarter. Williams high, attempted mark over Couch. Couch goes back, tries to get the hand pass to Stephen Hockey, grabbed by Rowe, didn't have the football. Collingwood fans not too happy, but it looked a fair and square free kick from here. Stephen Hockey plays on, kicks quickly. Along the wing, looking for Poole. The ball goes over for a throw-in, but it's now in Geelong's forward half. 11-6 plays, 9-7. It's been pretty difficult conditions. The... Uh, a strong breeze blowing across the ground, slightly favouring the small scoreboard in. Opportunity now for Richardson, again doing well. Clears the ball back up towards Colbert and Stasovic, but in there is Rowe. Tackled by Gary Hockey, held on a little bit too long, Gary. And the free kick will go to Rowe for the Magpies. He plays on quickly. Player on his own is Russell. Oh, another player on his own, further afield, it's Stasovic. The bounce could favour him, it does. McGuan running in support. In goes Mickey McGuan, skillfully, brilliantly, he kicks the goal. Three goals to McGuan. And by G, the Collingwood side showing tremendous spirit. They trail by just five points. Well, he held one earlier, McGuan across his body. I think it was his, his second goal where he hooked the ball. This time it's a check side. Very well done, Matt. Tremendous fitness, McGuan. Good battle between he and Couch, but McGuan would be winning in the fitness stakes. Well, Nick McGuan had a bit of a slump when the Pies had a slump, but he's really hit form in the last couple of weeks. Four goals last week, three goals today, and the Pies are within one kick. And they looked out of it earlier on when they trailed by 28 points at half time. Collingwood had kicked just four goals to the long break. Well, up in the middle. Off course to Barnes. Neither of them this time. Riccardi. 
They need to break a drought in Geelong. Collingwood would have kicked the last six goals. Riccardi's kicked a steal. Man in front woods. But exactly yes. right. That's exactly right. Now still took the mark earlier because he was in front of Miss Kick from Tudor. Now he's behind on two occasions has come down. Tony Woods, first senior game of the year, 14 possessions. Away to Perth. Gets behind the pack. Barnes throws himself at it. Richardson goes in after him. Well done, Alan Richardson, fighting the odds. But he's holding it. I reckon he looked around and thought, well, I've got a teammate here. Free kick to Scott. Tough old decision, isn't it? <laughs> You've got to push it on. Keep it moving. No, I'm not arguing that, but it's a, it's a tough decision. Kick by Scott. Handley in front. Punch by Kelly. Chris Siska missed it. And the ball is going out of bounds. Gary Adler kicked five goals to half time. He had just one kick in the third quarter. It was since half time, actually. And he's still on five goals, needing two more to bring up his century. Well, Mark Bairstow and Adler were two of the players that gave Geelong such a good advantage at half time. They've both been quiet. Here's a chance, though. Hocking. Steel. Uh, Gary Hocking. Brilliantly oh. done. Equally as good as the last goal. Oh. What a smart passage of play. He was going to be lumbered by Kelly. Kelly running him down. But Hocking is a terrific player. Remain cool. Got the ball. Watch this. Well, Handley was All good in, in that front. Now, yeah, listen, also. Kelly had him lined up. Bang, out goes the quick one to steal. Back to Hocking. Oh, well done, Gary Hocking. Yes, the skill level of the players today is just absolutely incredible. That was a great example. Gary Hocking. Oh, what a game it is now. It was a bit dull in the first half, but not now. Wright's hand pass set up. Nick Warren for a lot of trouble. Comes back to Wright. He's lost his footing. Scott has been sensational since quarter time. Away to Steele. Couch says, go, man. Darren Steele, ex-North Melbourne. Arches his back to get out of trouble. Goes long to the goal square. Ablett's there. Comes underfoot. Hacked out of the air by Perth towards the boundary line. Well played by Gary Perth. There's nothing worse for a forward to see a guy down the ground bouncing the ball. You don't know when he's going to let it go. It looks spectacular from an onlooker, and it's also quite inspiring seeing a fellow run down the ground. But if you're a forward, that's something you hate because you just don't know when they're going to let go with the ball. Still on Geelong's forward line. That was uh, Pickering. That is kick astray and the mark to Francisco. Francisco's kick short of centre wing. Hop course. Good mark. Yes, well done. He gets the handball away for Williams. Some runs still left in Collingwood. Williams on centre wing. Good shepherd. Williams goes up towards half forward. Short kick. Mark taken by Rowe. He can play on. He kicks it into the pocket. Stasevich will mark. Hasn't improved the angle though. But Craig Stasevich. He's kicked two goals. If he could kick his third, again the difference will be just five points. 40 metres, 35 metres out. Oh, it looks pretty good. I think it's a goal. No, it's not. The goal umpire up there didn't move all that much. The fans behind the goal are getting a bit excited. It's 10 points. Geelong's advantage. Barnes, short pass out of the fence. Free kick. No, no whistle. It comes to Russell. He goes back to Mitchell. Hoists it very high, close to the boundary line. Row of good effort. Here's Rocker. Hardly sighted today, Sad Rocker. Snap for goal across the face of goals. And brings up a minor score. Margin nine points to long in front, with just under 16 minutes remaining. Well, who would have thought that we'd have a finish looming like this when Geelong led by, what, 41 points in the third quarter? Collingwood showed tremendous character to get that back to just 18 points at three-quarter time. And right now, Collingwood playing man-to-man. -man. The margin is just nine points. Here's O'Reilly. His kick goes to the far side. Poole gets rid of his oh. opponent, then drops the mark. In goes Williams. The bounce a little awkward for that player, but he does it well and does it beautifully in the finish. He's going to kick Collingwood back into attack. In towards centre-half forward, Stasevich. Snapshot doesn't get the required distance or accuracy, and it's out on the full. The free kick to be taken back there 
for Geelong by Andrew Hughes. That mark would have come off. If it had it been earlier in the game, that mark to pull would have come off. But things just not going Geelong's way as they were in the first part of the game. Hughes looking out there for Barnes. Punched away by Monkhorst. Right tries to get it to McGuan. He does. McGuan dashingly gets onto the right foot. Kicks it high. And it's over. On the full, the kick to be taken back there by young Adrian Hickman. His kick up towards centre wing. Mont Forst oh. out goes Barnes. Oh. Well, answers down by. Mont Forst allowed to get away with that. Into Russell. Russell charges to the 50. Goes long towards goal. It's home. And the pass back to it in a kick. Three points to the margin. Well, and Collingwood running and running well. The ball going their way. It's always a case. Oh, that is a very doubtful one. Very, very doubtful. It's a great kick by Russell on the run. And the runners for Collingwood doing better to miss the last quarter. Well, plenty of cheering now being done by the Magpie fans. They were looking down the barrel, but they've got a real chance. Here goes Geelong. Steele should have given the first option away. Richardson caught by Riccardi. Back goes Richardson, the ball's still in there. Fraser, Riccardi's got him. Russell, he's been tackled, but he gets the ball clear for McGuan. And McGuan, who has been a fantastic player all day long. Mickey McGuan, he's kicked three goals, he's had four bounces. Go for a fifth, Mick, he does. Handball away. Russell, no, Watson. They may have messed it up. No, they haven't. Stasevic will get one. Stasevic has hit the post, you wouldn't believe it. occasion what have we got left 13 and a half minutes and it's just two points now in favor of Geelong well, we got a top game eventually out here at Waverley the kick to half back mark free kick man in front will be Colbert. Colbert and Lee Colbert playing his third game in the AFL an 18 year old up towards centre wing, Barnes and Montcourt. Oh, Barnes. that's a mark. Yes, first touch and second touch. He runs away, off the left. Inside the 50. Oh, on the chest of Francisco. Long forwards behind. The breeze is mostly across the ground, but certainly also at Geelong's back. But you wouldn't know the way Collingwood are dominating at the moment. Well done, Williams. Scott Russell goes for a run. Nobody coming towards him. Gives the hand pass away to another man with pace, Williams. His pass is short. Mark taken by Fraser. This for the lead. But he's missed it. Again, Scott Russell figuring in the one and Russell. The runners for Collingwood. Missed it. Starsevich would like to have another look at that. Tim McGrath goes to the far side of the ground. No mark taken. Colbert tries to get the hand pass for Poole. Free kick picked out of it. And it's going to young Colbert. Left half back for the Cats. Well, they must score, Geelong. They can't hang on. They've got to go into an attacking mode. There's a good mark taken by Scott. He runs on. He gathered his footing pretty well. Bangs it in towards full forward. Applet at the back. Kurt does well. So does Woods, Francisco, Collingwood doing grandly. Williams has been a key player in this last 10 minutes. How often has that ball gone forward in the last quarter? Geelong's forward line, their forwards behind. Every time it's gone down, they've been behind. Geelong have managed just one goal since the seven-minute mark of the third quarter. Now Barnes has gone into the full forward position. Kelly's gone with him. Applet centre half forward it looks like Curtin still with him so Hanley have got, will go into the ruck Ablett's gone right out of the game since five goals to half time I'd say the same about best over the skipper here's Williams Collingwood looking irresistible at the moment McGuan sensational off to Woods forward of centre wing run down by Steele the kick by Woods Stasevich low takes the mark 
brought up a big divot too. Waverley not in great condition. It's not in great condition either. Draw. It's all over the ground, those divots coming up. Way too far out to score. Into the breeze from that side of the ground. Collingwood mark. Mitchell right in front. Well, Barry Mitchell has found it pretty tough since going to Collingwood. All the publicity, all the room of money, <laughs> and he spent most of his career in black and white on the bench. Coming up for his ninth disposal, this to put the pies in front. He has made it. Touched right on the line, and through for a behind, it levels the scores. Well, what a bad effort to take the mark. Firstly by Barry Mitchell. Just couldn't quite kick the distance. Uh, Riley kicks in by you. This is difficult, but McGrath made it, and the mark has been paid between back pocket and right half back flank. Tim McGrath, 11 kicks and five hand passes, kicks out towards the wing. Scott Russell leaves it for Richardson. He goes on with it. No nonsense. Stasevich. Well, the kick slews off the side of his boot. Back goes O'Reilly and marks. Solid game to go, O'Reilly. Goes long. Out wide. Bearstow. Hasn't had many touches. Well done by Rowe. Dispossesses the captain. Rowe kicks it back. Hughes marks at the back of Mitchell. Geelong kicks to it in towards centre-half back. Handley is marked. Geelong to make a multiple change. Tudor and Hinkley warming up, and both will come on in a minute. Kick by Handley. Riccardi and Fraser. Fraser does well. Ball goes to centre-half forward. Russell. Sweeping hand pass. Too far for McEwen. Out comes Hughes. Takes the ball in front of himself. It gets run oh, by well done, McEwen. Taken down, tripped or pushed. Now a 50 metre penalty against Collingwood. Gee, the effort by McEwen was terrific. He gave away the free kick. Geelong making a change. It's Colbert coming off. That's an interesting one. Colbert coming off, so Hinkley will go down the back. Pick up Stasevich. Got some ability, Colbert. And the other one is Poole coming off to allow Tudor on, so Tudor will go to centre half. I mean the centre wing. And Trevor Poole get off quickly. Going up. It's amazing. This the scores are level. Geelong have a big breeze, and you'd reckon Collingwood are odds on. Steel behind again. Ball tunnelled out. Good trap by Saunders. Hurriedly boot the ball. The boundary line closes on this ball. Steel lopes, uh, Poole lopes after it. Gets there just inside the line. Did he take it out? The umpire was right there and said he took it over the line. And we'll have a throw in. They've come from 41 points down to draw level Collingwood. And even into the breeze, you'd have to fancy them to go on and win this game. Geelong have come to a standstill. Pickering a high ball. Barnes in the goal square. Prasiska gets back there. Kicks the ball in play, not prepared to concede a point. And the ball had a play in the pocket. Now Poole going off the ground, Tudor coming on for Geelong. Boundary thrown in the left forward pocket for Geelong. Kelly doing the ruck work up against Barnes. Brown somehow got out, kicks it to the front of the goals. Oh! And it is a behind. That ball is... Oh, good flicks as though he's in a little bit of trouble there, but the football certainly hit the behind post. So that rush behind for Geelong gives them the lead by just one point. 79 play, 78. Woods in a little bit of trouble. Bit of groin, maybe. So a lot of trouble. Perth kicks in. Centre half back. Mark taken by Kelly. Plays it by himself. Kelly now plays on. In towards the centre. Mark is taken by Stasevich. Looking to give the hand pass away. Plays on quickly. Kick forward. Fraser loves to run with it. But this time he gives it to McGuan, who equally loves to run with it. Finds some space. Go, Nick, he said. Go, Nick, he said. And he kicks it behind. I wonder what if you've got to question Geelong's fitness. I you know you always look bad when you're running second. Collingwood didn't look too good early. Kick in. Mark is taken by Scott. Seven and a half minutes to go. Scores level here at Waverley. Tudor, half-back flank for Geelong. Short pass up towards centre wing. Mark taken by Pickering. Goes long with the breeze. That's a 65-metre kick over Brown. Top half for Sisko. Been well in the last quarter, Gavin for Sisko. At least Brown was in front on that occasion. Kelly gives him some run. Himself. 
Went half a game without getting a kick break, Kelly. Oh. Run down, doesn't get a kick this time either. On all fours, he goes after it. Scott dishes up the hand pass to Brown. His Abbott tripped. No whistle. Abbott playing up the ground. Not looking like getting the two for his hundred at the moment. Well done, Tudor. Yeah, a little backhander yes. to Gary Hocking. He stuff. approaches the 50. Goes long, Gary Hocking. He's kicked both their goals in this last quarter. Where would they be without Hocking? That's exactly right, Drew. He's fit and he runs all day. Maybe he's got something to do with the job he does away from the ground. That's garbage, Vince, don't you? Exactly right. You've got to be fit to do that. Let me tell you, the one behind that truck and uh, keep up with it. At least keep up with the truck. Done a bit of that in your time, have you? Yeah, watch them. I've got great admiration for them. Look pretty fit, those guys. Geelong by six points. Gary Hockey kicking his second goal. Pickering has had a, a, an impression since coming off the bench. Now oh, excellent! That's the first time he's been in front and he takes a mark in the last quarter, Steel. Well, he must have been listening because you have been quite critical of him being at the back. Well, he's got a real chance here. One gets the impression that this kick will be aided by the breeze. Steel from, he'll kick from outside 50. Doesn't get the distance. Just slips off the side of his boot. And in the finish, it goes over for boundary throw in. She made better of that steal. Well, the distance. Geelong have got the ball in their right forward pocket. Five and three quarter minutes left. They lead by just one kick. Saunders run down oh. by Steele. In comes Woods. He gets his foot to the ball. Back near the centre. The bounce, all important. Gary Hocking, hard at the football. Well done. High kick. Centre half forward marking contest. Pickering can't take it. In goes Saunders, tackled by Scott. Ball held up and Pickering gets a pat. It's interesting watching the blue coats behind the goal square to where Gary Ablett is going to kick or could kick his hundred. They're everywhere in anticipation. And the photographers. They might save their film. Doesn't look like it at the moment. Couch. Dominant the first half. Gary Hocking again. Gives it away unselfishly. Brown just gets it away oh. to steal. He's gone. Kelly got him. He's on the, the goal. A behind. Oh. Shooter, that was. Seven points now. The margin in favour of Geelong. Gary Hocking might have been better to kick it himself then. Gary Perth kicks it to himself and then goes in the Montforce direction. Ball in short, Russell tackled by Hocking, didn't have the football. Oh, Gary, Gary, steady. <laughs> 50 metres. Lucy plays with some enthusiasm, doesn't he? Maybe a little indiscreet on occasions, but he certainly... Montforce coming off. Certainly plays with some feeling, Gary Hocking. Good to see. Scott Russell kicks Collingwood up towards centre-half forward. Marking contest. No one can grab it. Mitchell in there for the Magpies. And the umpire decides on a bounce. It's about 30 metres out from the Collingwood goal, directly in front. Now what's happening here? McCartney's gone up to centre-half forward. Persis was coming down to full back. Pert has gone up for ground following Ablett, I think. Yes, he has. Rocker doing the ruck work. No one can clear the football except Stephen Hocking. Off to O'Reilly. Goes for the safety of the boundary line. The umpire calls for a boundary throw in. Just under four minutes left. Geelong by seven points. Gary Ablett in the back line. Geelong was starting to stack their back line. Ablett, five goals to half time. Doesn't look like building on it from back there. A little hand pass. They just get out of trouble. The kick close to the boundary line and out of bounds. Margin seven points. So Collingwood are two kicks behind and the time ticks down. Three and a half minutes left. Darcevic and Handley. It comes to the back. Richardson, 70 metres from goal. Hoisted around the neck, and he'll get a free kick, Alan Richardson. Too far out to score, but a mark on the forward line and a goal for Collingwood would make it a one-point game again. Done a great job on Bairstow, who's had one touch since half-time. 
Handley. That's good because what happens, the ball's going to drop in the last quarter. They won't get the distance of players. They're a little tired. You've got to stay in front. Handley was, and the ball dropped into that hole. Everyone behind it, Cotton, coming the forward line. Hand all away for Hinkley. Hinkley's short kick. He had a good look, and he saw Hickmont further afield. He can play on. Player in support, high. Hinkley. Handball, Riccardi. Spins out of trouble. Very well done. Back to Hinkley. He's had three posies in that passage of play. He's long kick towards full forward. Nearly a mark. It's at the back. Yeah, yeah, will it get there? Get a goal? No. It's helped over in the finish for a rush behind. That was Woods getting back. And it's another score for Geelong. They lead now by eight points with two minutes left. So you would think with the pattern of play that Geelong could hold on. Gary Perk, the ball 200 metres from the Collingwood goal. They've got to get two scores in short. Fraser tries to tap it on. Falls over. Bearstow. Run down by Williams. Back there, Saunders. He's caught by Tudor. In goes Scott. Wright has the football. Advantage for Collingwood. Graham Wright runs away. He's on centre wing. Gives the hand pass away. Williams, who loves to run with the football. Anyone to give it to? Yes. Have a guess. Mickey McGuan running all the way from half back. Kicking towards half forward. Brad Rowe. Handball. Look for Rocker. But Steve Hocking defending grandly. Kicks it across the ground. And the oh, ball is taken man. brilliantly by Hickmott in front of Watson. He's kicked across his body. He spotted the player that was Riccardi. And it was a brilliant kick. Riccardi finds Scott. They've got space. The Cats with one minute 30 left. Scott goes in short. Barnes overruns it. Kelly is there. 50 metres from the Geelong goal. His hand pass goes to Perth. Perth kicks it back to the wing. And the bounce is good for Ronnie McEwen. His oh, hand pass. He looks for Stasevich. You're gone, Craig. But he bounces off that tackle. Handball away for Scott Russell. Some of those Geelong players don't want it. Here's Mickey McGuan again. The pass. OK. Rocket drops it. It hit him on the chest. In goes McGrath. Over the top is Rocker. And the free kick to Tim McGrath. And Geelong should win the game from here. Gee, some of those Geelong players, you question their commitment. Boy, do they want to win a game or not? I don't think so. Well, here's one who uh, I wouldn't question. Tim McGrath. We're into the last 30 seconds. Kelly can't take the mark. Richardson again. Kick off the ground, Barnes. Ablett. Got rid of by McCartney. Fraser. Handball over the top. McEwen. Sideways, Russell. Running McCartney. He's going to get run down. He gives a hand pass away for Graham Wright. Wright's kick, looking for Rocker, but he's beaten badly there by O'Reilly. Well and he's played a pretty disciplined game back there at fullback oh, Stephen O'Reilly. He stood up. How much time left? The siren will sound. Right now, there it is, a Geelong victory. And deservedly so, the Cats, who led by 41 points, at one stage in the third quarter, have hung on and beaten Collingwood by eight points. 13.987, Collingwood, 11.13.79. The the the